Welcome back everybody. Today is going to be fun because I make an attachment to tilt my vise. I'm getting the water jet, the big mill, and the lathe all fired up to bring this idea to life. The vise that I want to tilt is a prototype that I built two years ago that I made right here in this shop. I built the vise to test out some design concepts that I had. To see if they worked, I tried to torture it to failure with no luck. So now the vise is back into the spotlight to help with another prototype. So I would like to build a tilting vice plate for my vise. I want it to tilt forwards and backwards, and of course I want it to be nice and strong. So in order to do this, I need a nice heavy duty piece of plate steel that the vise is gonna mount to. And then to control the orientation of that vise, we're gonna need to weld something 90 degrees to that base plate. This is gonna give us our pivot points and our nice slot to be able to orientate the vise in any position we want to put it in. And then to secure this whole thing to the table, we're gonna need a really nice heavy duty piece of plate steel that gets welded right to the side. Now this is going to be able to look nice, it's going to feel good, it's going to look like part of the vise as a whole unit. So let's go into CAD, drop these components, and see what we come up with. I want to build the bracket in virtual space, so I'm using a tool called SolidWorks. This gives me a better understanding of how the parts fit together and check for weld and part interferences. Once I'm happy with the way the part looks, I can save the file as a DXF. This turns the CAD model into a language that the water jet can read. This machine is called the Mach 500. It gets its name from the jet being able to travel five times faster than the speed of sound. The water jet is pretty awesome. It's gonna take that DXF file and follow a path and use 94,000 PSI of water and garnet to slice through this one inch thick plate steel. In order for this design to work properly, a thick plate I think is absolutely mandatory. This is going to keep the vibration, movement out of the whole assembly when it's all fit together. If you're interested more on this technology, I have a video talking about the ins and outs and all the little details on how this machine works. This is the top plate that the vise gets mounted on. I'm going to tap these half 13. I'm going to use a tool called the tapper. These are the two taps that I use the most, and they're both spiral flute taps. So this one, the chips go out the front. This one, the chips go out the back. So if you have a blind hole, you'll use this one. If you have a through hole, generally use this one. Okay, here we go. Pushing in with the drill. And then when I want to reverse, I just pull back. I believe this Champion Tapper has a maximum capacity of a half inch tap. Before I do any welding, I want to remove all the mill scale that are on the parts so that I can paint it and weld through it. I'm going to try to remove this thick mill scale with this diamond wire wheel made by Ferd. Yeah, that's right. These wires have diamonds on them. The wire brush requires a little bit slower speed, so a variable speed grinder is necessary. The brush actually does a pretty good job at removing the mill scale, but my only complaint is that this thing is really expensive. Another problem we have to address is the sharp corners that the water jet creates. The best tool I've found to remove that sharp corner is this pneumatic chamfering tool. I like it better than using just a normal grinder with a flap disc. It can do outside and inside features that the flap disc just can't reach. It leaves a more consistent edge and I think it looks good too. This is the working pivot piece and it gets attached through this pin right here. So as this pivots, this is what's gonna allow everything to tilt on this dog bone. This plate is going to theoretically sit flat on the table and then when it tilts it will roll forward and become 90 degrees, something like that. But if you were to make this piece for yourself, everything in between here is virtually not needed. But I like the way it looks, so it could just be an L shape. Let's start assembling this thing to see what we have to do. I'm going to save myself a lot of time, so I'm going to add a 3 8 of an inch overhang. And what this is going to allow me to do is put a nice good fillet weld in here. That's a really strong joint. This is just a detail that I like to add instead of a nice smooth rollover joint. This is the bracket that's going to be doing all the pivoting and I'm going to weld it right here to the side. There's a relief in there to weld. Same with the bottom. And that weld, that's what this notch is for. It's literally ready to assemble. The weld doesn't interfere with anything. And then when I go to weld this bracket on to the table, it's going to do the same thing for this one. 
So what I'd like to do is have this stud welded inside this hole to where the non-threaded section <laughs> is the bearing surface. And then we're gonna make a custom handled nut. These threads are obviously too long. So let's get this all mounted together. Cut this short and weld it inside of this piece. Now that everything's held together like it's supposed to, I can now weld this thing to the side of the table. So let's weld it on and we'll uh, test her out. Have our little dog bone bracket welded to the side of the table. This face of the bracket is now face of the table. I think that looks amazing. The problem with this is that when this gets rolled up, there's an interference. In order to eliminate this interference fit, my original idea was just to grind the edge of the table away. After careful consideration, I don't think I like the way this is going to look. So I'm going to build the clearance into the vice plate itself. I'm going to put the clearance into the plate by creating a groove with an end mill. This definitely would have been a lot easier before the two plates were welded together. I need a slot that's an inch and quarter wide and about a half inch deep. And this big Cincinnati machine makes real quick work of that. Machining on inside corners is really tricky. So having that real long end mill is really handy. So well, this is uh, the clearance that I was looking for. Let's go test it. Okay. Let's see, please baby pivot. Oh yes. Spilled, 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 spilled. So let's talk about how this vise doesn't shift around and locks into place. This is a shoulder bolt. Cool thing about it is it, this does not require the bolt to be tight to lock it into place. And the shoulder of this bolt registers inside of this three quarter hole. Now the beauty about this is that once you remove the shoulder out of the hole, the vise can pivot. This is the exciting part. We get to test it out and see how it performs. So this is the standard orientation that I'm probably gonna use the vise in most of the time. But if I do wanna flip it over to do some filing or hold the work like a sandwich, all we gotta do is loosen up this lock pin, which is the pivot, the slot, and then we can twist it or tip it. It's very light, it's really easy to do and operate. Before I tip it, I can loosen the swivel base up and I can flip it around. Now that is snazzy. Lock the bolts down so she doesn't move on us. Then we can test how rigid it is. That is pretty secure. I feel that that's not going anywhere. This is not an orientation that I'd be doing pounding on or anything. This is more for work holding, but man, that one inch plate feels great. It helps to have this huge mass of the table anchoring this vise down. So in this orientation, we can put something flat, which is much more convenient for filing or any other work orientation that requires something to work around the edges. You can go in the vise like this. The handle's really easy to operate from the top. Let's take this out and let's turn the vise 90 degrees. Loosen up the joints. Now this is cool, because now we have a, basically a throatless vise. Now we can put a piece of long stock or rod in here. 
Oh, that is so cool. This has a unique feature that I kind of like. It moves the work away from the table. So if you wanted to get your chair in here, really convenient. Ooh, I'm digging this even better. I like it. And then of course we can go halfway in between. Maybe we want to hold it at a 45 on the swivel. You can go there. Much easier to file like this. I know you're probably saying, Jason, go buy that Irwin vise that positions those jaws up and down and all around. And I would agree with you, yes, that's a great vise. But what it doesn't do is position the jaws like this. And this is, was the main goal for building this whole contraption is getting the jaws in this orientation. Still going. What do we want to put in here? Anything we want. <laughs> if you wanted to uh, ream these holes out or drill holes, maybe you wanted to chamfer all of those. Much easier for some operations. I like being able to choose what orientation you want to work in. Very cool. Well guys, that was a lot of fun building this bracket. But before you guys go, I have one more thing that I'd like to show you that I've been working on for three years now. So roll the tape. 